We just made it into the Sahara Desert in Morocco. In our last episode, we left Fez and drove the nine hours to Merzouga. The drive was actually a lot of fun because we got to see so much of the diverse Moroccan countryside. And we made it to our camp just in time for an incredible sunset. Look how beautiful this is. We've just arrived to our tent in the Sahara Desert. Look how massive this place is, you guys. In this episode, we're going to be dancing in the desert, learning about the nomadic way of life, and ending the day riding camels through the Sahara. What an incredible morning. Ooh, sunrise here, so beautiful, right? Yeah, the landscape just goes on forever. It honestly looks like a painting. And I almost did not wake up this morning. Tommy left for sunrise like a few minutes before me and I looked out the window and I saw that it was light and I was like, oh, I'm coming. And he locked me inside <laughs> the tent. So there's a like a latch on the outside, so I closed it, otherwise the door's gonna swing open. And, and he locked me inside the tent and I texted him, I was like, you locked me inside and his phone was on silent, but he like ran. So I had to sprint in the dunes and run back down and then this other Italian couple were making fun of us. They're like, oh, we saw you running. <laughs> he came back for me. He gets a little excited with taking pictures. <laughs> All right, let's go get some coffee. <laughs> he definitely hasn't had his coffee yet. He doesn't want to get up. So we just had a wonderful breakfast. We're just waiting for Addy to pick us up. He's gonna show us around the desert today. Cute. Then you can just tuck it in there. Yes. Okay, sweet. I appreciate it. Look how cute you look. We're ready for the day. I saw and tied my scarf up to where it doesn't choke my neck. So, and if you get dusty, just do like this. I like it like this, it's fairly cute. My head is hot. <laughs> it's hot, but oh, a fly just landed on the lens. Flies out of control. We made our way back to Merzuga to meet up with our wonderful guide, Addy. Looking good today, man. Looking fresh. Yeah. <laughs> Looking fresh. We learned Addy grew up in a nomadic family where he had 14 brothers and sisters and was the first of his family to go to school. We were super lucky to have a fantastic guide who became the heart and soul of this adventure. We learned, yalla, yalla. Yalla, yalla. That, we learned that that means let's go. So Adi just brought us to the local market and we're gonna pick up some vegetables because the nomads are going to cook them up for us for lunch. So we're just gonna go pick up some veggies. Good? Yes. All right. Happy default lunch. Yeah. Out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I love all of the different landscapes. You have like the dunes, then the flat black rock, and then the mountains over there. Yeah, it's so beautiful. It feels like you're on, on some other planet. Exactly. It feels like a different planet. As the Berbers, we take, I mean, in anything like manifestations or pictures, we take three. The Berber fight for three things. A well, 
is the language because it's getting extinct in North Africa. The second one is Akhal, the Berber land, which is North Africa, North African countries, I mean. Then Afghan is the Berber people, I mean, fighting for their, their rights and uh, the humanity and everything. That's what does it mean. So okay. instead of peace, you do three. Yes. And then he was making fun of me because I can only do two and a half. <laughs> oh, get up! <laughs> two and a half. So, this is why. <laughs> well, 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 let's start. Camel, camel done. Oh, to the camel. That's good. <laughs> so this is the local food in the area. In English, we call it Berber pizza. In the Berber language, we call it or Abadir. Nowadays they cook it in the oven. Mm -hmm. But in the past, because the people they were nomads, they move a lot. They just follow the rain. So in, in order to save time while they are moving, they have to make lmilla or Abadir, or this Berber pizza. They make a big bread like that. She will put all the vegetables inside, make it together, then cook it in the oven. I noticed that there was a lot of bread and it doesn't really seem like there's too many people around but I had asked Addy like you know she has a lot of food here a lot of bread is she making this for a lot of people and he said yes she's making it for the family that's quite big but they also traditionally make a lot of food just in case any unexpected guests show up they have enough food to host everybody which is really sweet very generous. Yeah, super generous. Is that her okay. niece to sit like that for so long? She is used for that maybe. Yeah. <laughs> So as the mom's preparing the Berber pizza, the daughter's collecting rocks here. I'm being picky about my rock selection. So this is the, the pizza oven, the oven. She takes some of these sticks and she puts them over there until they get very, very hot. And then there's some rocks on top of the iron here and they prevent the pizza from sticking. Once everything gets hot, she puts the pizza on top of the rocks until it's cooked and ready to eat. That is the end of the demonstration. Who's that good looking dude? <laughs> Addy continued to tell us about how the nomads live. He showed us their living quarters, how they get their water, and talked to us about the roles of each family member. So pretty. The mother. She is the one who do a lot of things. She has to make the breakfast for the shippers very early because the shippers mostly, they start before the sunrise. Mostly for the nomads, olive oil, soup, dates, and tea. So after the, the shippers, they have breakfast and they left the house, mostly the kids. That's why the nomads, they have a lot of kids because they need them to ship. Help, yeah. Yes, exactly. After that, the mother has to uh, go to find the firewood. After bringing the firewood, she has to go again to bring the water. And they, mostly the nomads, they don't live by the next to the well. They live far away from the well because the well attract a lot of strangers. Yeah. And by the day, mostly only the women stay in the tent. And it takes an hour and a half to two hours to bring the water from the well. Then she has to prepare the lunch. After that, she has to collect all the dirty clothes mm -hmm. and take them to wash the dirty clothes. Then the day is over and prepare the dinner. Wow. Yeah. So much. <laughs> the Berber culture get a lot of symbols because of the women making carpets and expressing their emotions and their feelings. So did your mom used to do that too? Yes, she knows how to do that. Yeah, yeah of course, awesome. because yeah. we were nomads originally. So. How many children do they have in total? I'm not sure exactly. It's a yeah. big, it's a big number because yeah. he has three wives actually. Okay, yeah. So it will be Many. 18 or something. Oh wow! Our host at the camp. Yeah. Has nine brothers and sisters. Okay. So That's... he was asking me how many I had, and I told him five. And he was like, "Oh, who's surprised?" That's nothing compared to. No, Harvey. I know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no.
whenever you make a lot of bubbles, it can filter the tea. It keeps the sand away from the tea. Oh, I mean, that's why that's mostly why. you can see a lot of people trying to take it up to make bubbles, especially in the desert. But nowadays it becomes something traditional. The people, they like it with bubbles. Without bubbles, for example, my father, if you give him a tea without bubble, he will tell you, oh, I need tea, not oil. <laughs> Give me tea. Yeah. So, ten, ten mert? Ten mert, yes. Ten mert. Yeah. mert. Ten mert. Oh, look yeah. at Tommy's learning some Berber. Yeah. Any takeaways from the nomad visit at all? My first impression is just how difficult of life this is. All the work they have to do and the lifestyle they have to provide for themselves to survive. But there's also this appeal of the openness and the freedom and the natural, simple methods of cooking and laundering and doing whatever they do that's very appealing. Yep. See that way? Yeah. Oh, look at the dough. Okay. It's all crispy and fluffy with all of the baked veggies inside. It's good to me, I think. Mm. Great spices, carrots, onion, parsley. Good. A little bit more. The Berber pizza was delicious. This family was so kind to take us into their house and host us, weren't they? Tea, pizza, fruit. Yeah, it's pretty funny watching me kill a pomegranate, but. <laughs> I didn't capture that. No. All right, back in the car. Let's keep road tripping. We're on top of the car. <laughs> We just stopped at, off at this place to listen to some music. Fun, right? Yeah, it's so fun. That girl's getting into it for dancing. This is the filter. This one, you use it to filter the water. So we stopped to take a little walk in this oasis in the middle of the desert and I just love like walking in. You get the contrast of like the bright blue sky, the orange sand dunes, the green palm trees. Pig. It's a pig? Excellent. <laughs> wow, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie got it. He said, what a tree is this? She said, fig. Have we ever yeah. seen a fig tree before? No. That was a great guess. Well, we've already, we know dates are in the palm trees. <laughs> we already know the almond tree and the olive trees. So she's like, what else comes from Morocco? <laughs> she guessed fig. <laughs> that was pretty good, huh? So we're walking through these beautiful gardens. It's pretty cool. All the families own their own plot of land and they all share the irrigation system. It's a very beautiful place too, with all the greenery. Oh my gosh, they have so many things planted in here. We've seen almond, peppers, parsley, wheat, corn. Everybody is planting something different. They had one plot that was just full of hot chili peppers. I was like, oh, that family likes it spicy and that's exactly what I would be growing too. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I think we're about to ride camels, but I'm a little nervous. They're kind of bigger when you stand next to them. Aren't they? Yeah. So we just dropped us off. We're about to ride camels back to camp and hopefully enjoy another sunset here. Are you ready? Yeah, it's going to be a really great way to end the day. It's been such a great experience today, so. We heard they're not super comfortable. This is like, I think, an hour ride, so. I'm wondering how your parents are going to do. I'm wondering how we're going to do. We'll see. Perfect. Okay. There you go. Look. Thank you, brother. Okay, we're ready. ready. We're officially ready. Okay, okay this is Mohammed. Mohammed. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice okay. to meet you. Nice. Can you just go up? Yes. Ooh, look at that. Wow. Flexibility, Mom. Yeah. yeah. Hold, yeah. Boy. Wow, you got you got up wow. there! Wow. You got a big boy. Woo! Oh, it's really good. Hang on know. tight, right? Oh, hey, hang on, baby. 
Mom and Jackie, how are you guys doing? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, my legs feel like jelly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the ride. I appreciate it. Well, that was super fun. First time riding a camel. That was so great. Much I can't see. Oh, my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> she's, she's like walking into the shot like this. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So we're gonna rush back, use the bathroom, get some water, and run and find our sunset spot. Another amazingly beautiful sunset. <laughs> Something about being out here in the desert, out in nature, it's so quiet, so beautiful. Check out the moon behind me, horizon. It's a very special place. Our guide and seeing how the nomads live today. The lady making us lunch, saw her little daughter helping out, watching after the baby. Very special travel day and to share it with family. Wherever you are, I hope you're doing well. Hope life is good. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the morning.